On today's Saturday news, Becky Lynch is expected to be back in the mix with WWE soon. Why Kenny Omega is returning in New Japan Pro Wrestling and not AEW. An interesting person was spotted at the WWE Performance Center last week. And WWE have signed yet another member of the Anawaii family. Hello everyone, you are watching What Culture Wrestling on this fine Saturday. I am Gareth here on my own, as you can tell, because our lovely Phil, he's gone down ill, all right? So send him some goodwill via X, Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff because that'd be brill. Yeah, go and do that. Go and do it because he deserves it. We don't like our Phil being ill, so he just needs a lot of love and positive vibes just just send those out through the through the internet go and do that for him right now but while you're here while we clicked on the video now like, let's let's talk about some news i mean why not let's talk about all the things that have gone down in wrestling over the last like day or so one of the big stories the first one that we are going to talk about is becky lynch because obviously like she's not been on WWE programming for quite a while now since like just after wrestlemania i believe so yeah a lot of people are wondering what's what's happening when are you coming back becky what's going down well well pw inside have reported they are they have said that sources within WWE and Netflix have stated that Lynch is expected to be back in the mix with the company by the time Raw premieres on Netflix in January 2025 so we're not too far away from that it's only a couple of months so it is looking like she could be just uh, preparing now hopefully for a return very very soon because we miss Becky I mean that division I feel like misses a star of that magnitude somebody you can just put on incredible matches with pretty much anybody that she gets in there with and she's just got all the, the aura all that stuff so I, I miss Becky and I hope she is back very soon just as a little note on this as well she is going to be appearing at the Vulture Festival in Los Angeles this Sunday which is tomorrow now yes that's, that's my brain working uh, so that's going to be for a conversation called Becky Lynch Disarms Us get it because the move's called Disarm Her that's the one so yeah she'll uh, be talking about like a memoir that she obviously released earlier this year and the Vulture's also teasing that Lynch may actually give us a glimpse at what's uh, what's up next for her, what's in the, the future. She could then maybe say something like, oh, I'm going to be on Raw on Netflix. Go check it out. She could do something like that. You never know with this kind of stuff. But speaking of like the whole the Netflix deal and all that stuff, uh, apparently a lot of people who were watching Netflix last night, I believe for the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, silly thing that they try and call boxing, that thing, uh, apparently there was, there was a little trailer or a little like glimpse of the Raw logo that's going to be like the new Raw logo for Netflix and it looked like a, a red razor blade with Raw in it that kind of stuff so I'm sure whoever's editing this video right now will be able to throw that on there and just just to show you show you the, the logo what it looks like what do you think of it you let me know in the comments below like are you excited for that are you excited for when Raw is going to premiere on Netflix that's going to be on January 6, 2025 uh, just just let me know let, let me know all your thoughts and feelings on that on Becky just all the good stuff but somebody that a lot of people obviously have a lot of thoughts and feelings and opinions about as well is Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega, who again has not been on screens for quite some time now, like wrestling or doing anything like that, because he's obviously been really ill. Um, he's been through a, a really horrible time over the last like year or so. So he's now looking like he's going to be getting himself very close to a return in the not too distant, fu uh, not too distant future. Sorry, and uh, he's aiming to be coming back to fitness uh, at Wrestle Dynasty, and that's on January 5th, and that's, that's again an, another big January moment that could be on the horizon, and he was talking, he was talking to, uh, he was talking to Sean Ross Sapp uh, via Fightful and uh, just talking about why he's chosen to aim for that day, because obviously that's the big like New Japan AEW mix crossover thing that's going to be going down, why he's chosen to, to make a, an appearance there as his big return, rather than just like an AEW specific show and uh, he explained this, he said it's a, it's a heartfelt nod to like New Japan, a company that he believes has been super crucial to him and his development. Uh, the way he's he kind of spoke about it here, he said, the way I look at it is a lot of people, not only in Japan, but internationally, they never knew who I was until I did big things in New Japan. So I really owe New Japan a gigantic thank you. And on top of this, he, he's also said, I do feel that there's a debt I have to repay in some way, shape, form or fashion. And I think that if making my comeback at the Tokyo Dome is a way to repay that, if it can help something for their business then i'm more than happy to do that so for me it just feels like he's been respectful to, to a company that was so integral to his development and him becoming such a massive star within the wrestling business and this is where you go you know what i could return in AEW, a company that i've helped build and all this stuff but i just want to do this for new japan right now i believe there's also another quote out there um, of him saying that AEW just didn't really need him right now because there's a lot of 
like talented people on that roster doing good things he's like I just come in and maybe going to be nudging somebody out of the way and taking their spot so for me it just feels like uh, the, an idea that Kenny's gone yeah that, that seems like something that I'm uh, I want to do in the, the, with my return at this point it's the, probably the, more, the most effective use of my return at this point so good on him I mean the guy's been out for ages he can do whatever the hell he wants when he comes to his return because <laughs> there was a time where he looked like he might not get a chance to return so if he wants to come back in a show that's like more New Japan AEW crossover than just AEW then Kenny you do you we'll back you all the way we love you man and uh, yeah so Moving on, uh, a completely different sort of new story now. We've got uh, somebody was spotted at the performance performance center. It's really hard this on your own, isn't it? I'm just I'm just flubbing over my lines, and I'm here Phil here to laugh at me, and it's just it's just me. It's just me on my own, man. Just feel sorry for me. Play some little violins, but uh, something that uh, did apparently pop up at the performance center last week is Scott Demore. Okay, Scott Demore, who's the former TNA president, uh, he was reportedly at the performance center. Uh, Fightful Select has reported this and said that he was visiting and he was given a tour of the building, which was probably lovely. He was looking around, seeing all the facilities, all the rings, all these like athletes just like banging into each other, getting all sweaty. But it was like, yeah, that's great. And the report also notes that there was some informal conversations during the visit, and there is no word of anything more than just a visit coming out of the meeting. So there's no word on whether he's going to be in, in any way associated with WWE right now, or like having any impact on the product or whatever it is, and like being involved with. NXT, that kind of stuff. Like, there's no word on that just yet. So hold your horses right now. Uh, Demore was released from TNA back in February, but then since then he's gone on to revive the Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling promotion thing, which has been doing some good stuff, getting a lot of attention. Uh, so yeah, that's that's he, he's a busy guy right now. So whatever it is, maybe it's like a cross promotion thing. Maybe WWE sends some people over to Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling, do all that kind of stuff. That'd be interesting. We'll just have to wait and see, won't we? But it's just an interesting name. That's why I said it was an interesting name who, who'd been found in the performance center and we'll just have to see what comes of it but we, we do know one thing right now when it comes to WWE's performance center and people within it they've got a, a couple a lot of new recruits a lot of new people a new class even that are going to be uh, entering the WWE system and looking like they're going to be the stars of tomorrow and uh, one particular name is quite eye-catching actually but you could probably say two that are really like whoa okay uh, the first one is lance anawaii and you will recognize that name right away because obviously he's a member of the anawaii family the bloodline all that stuff roman reigns the rock all these mega stars he's a part of that family uh, he's the son of samu and the grandson of the late arthur he was obviously the one of the wild samoans and he's 32 years old he's a former member of the mlw roster uh, he spent a couple of months uh, competing for Pro Wrestling Noah that was back in 2023 as well and he's also made a few enhancement talent appearances in WWE like over the years I think he was involved in an angle with Roman Reigns and Shane McMahon in 2019 so yeah that's uh, he's been in and around the WWE system but he's never been like officially signed uh, but now he has and that's it and his signing was all but confirmed like a couple of people saw him on X like uh, at a charity event and he was among like NXT talent there uh, so he was yeah he says that he was recently spotted among the NXT talent so a lot of people are like, mm, does that mean that you're going to be joining NXT? Well, it looks pretty much like you will be now. And yeah, moving on to the other people who are obviously signed within this class as well. You've got former NFL players, Elijah Holyfield. Again, if your ears are pricking up, I recognize that last name. Yes, that is the son of boxing legend Evander Holyfield and WWE legend who appeared at Saturday night's main event, I believe, and boxed Matt Hardy, I think. That is one of those weird memories that's just out there. And also you've got Trill Williams, um, who's, yeah, he's also been... Uh, confirmed to be joining as a signing with WWE and joining up with the Performance Center. They both had tryouts with the company in summer. Holyfield played running back at the University of Georgia and Williams was a defensive back for Syracuse University. So yeah, and after college, they, they both briefly had an NFL career as well. In terms of other people, other members of this class, you've got um, Zaria or Zaria, who obviously has already debuted in NXT and like been a part of a few big matches already and big moments. Uh, she's a part of this class. And then you've also got Camden Gagnon. I'm going to butcher some names here. Get ready. Uh, Kyle Klink, Chase Klein, uh, Tatiana Dumas, Haley Montoya, Serena Linton, Karen Best, Bailey Humphrey, and Darcy Khan. I'm going to go back over those and just explain like what they're from in terms of like 
their background. So uh, Gagnon was a football player, uh, Klink's obviously football again, uh, Klein football, and then you got Dumas was an Australian stunt performer and basketball player, uh, Montaya was a volleyball player, uh, Linton was a gymnast, Bess was a track and field player, Humphrey was an acrobatics tumbler person, that's what they're called, and Khan was a track and field performer as well. So there you go, a lot more athletes have joined the WWE system, and obviously you've got Anoa'i as well, he's like a wrestler and all this stuff, um, like wrestled outside anyway beforehand, and it's, it's quite a, a diverse group there, so it'll be very interesting to see yeah, what comes of this? Like, we've seen classes in the past, like some absolutely stacked classes, like when you look at what they've gone to achieve, and WWE have been not bad when it comes to this, like, recruiting stuff over the last couple of years. So I I'm very intrigued to see what happens in the future with this lot. Let me know what you think, uh, who you're excited to see on NXT or wherever they land within the WWE system. Uh, let me know what you think of Kenny Omega, like, turning up in New Japan rather than AEW. If he does finally return at Wrestle Dynasty, I'm losing track of all the pay-per-views right now. My brain is just sludged. There's so many. And what was my other story? Oh, yeah, Scott Namore. Uh, what, what do you think Scott Demore was doing at the, bomb, the Performance Center? Uh, blah, 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 losing words yet again. So yeah, let me know what you think of all that stuff, all that good stuff. Um, I have been Gareth, just stumbling my way through this video like I stumble through life. Uh, follow myself on that X thing if you want, even though it's just an absolute dumpster fire right now, at gmorgan04. Follow myself on Instagram, at Gareth Morgram, and I've got a fitness page on there as well, which is at fitness.focus.gm for loads of motivational stuff. If you need a bit of help, or assistance within the gym world i'll be there just lifting weights and just making fun of the whole thing because you gotta laugh you gotta laugh your way through these kind of things that's how you get the best results laughing smiling and occasionally crying yes that is me that has been what culture wrestling saturday news video send phil all the love and hopefully we'll be back on the the old two wrestling twin bike very soon i am good at this see you later